Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah Breck and I help swing dancers all around the world have more dances that are creative, that feel good, that are rhythmical, just dances that make them happy. So in this video, we are gonna be talking about four ways that you can learn line dancing fast. And I mean, really fast. So if you are excited, let's dive in. Number one, so this is more about giving yourself grace. Here's the thing it's gonna be a lot easier and you're gonna be a lot faster at memorizing routines when you already know the basic vocabulary. So for me, when I'm out on the dance floor and I'm like, oh, I don't know that line dance, and I look, I go, okay, rock step, triple step, sailor step, wizard, cool. Like, my brain can piece that together and then I just have to learn what the modifications are and the wall changes and et cetera. So just giving yourself grace that knowing that over time, as you learn more line dancing, as you memorize the vocabulary of this dance, you will already naturally be faster at learning. But also keep that in mind when you're out at the social club and you see a line dance that you wanna learn, instead of thinking like, oh my goodness, that's a, I haven't learned it yet, so I can't do it. Take a look, just first, just the footwork. Take a look and say, okay, can I recognize what's going on? Can I recognize each of those vocabulary steps? And then can I piece that vocabulary together? You might be surprised at how much you actually already know. And under the topic of focusing one thing at a time, that brings me to number two, which is focus one thing at a time. So in a line dance, there's a lot that's going on. You have the footwork, you have the momentum, how you're traveling through space, you have the wall changes, you have when you're spinning, when you're not spinning. So there's a lot of things. Your brain does not have the capacity to multitask to that level. So what I want you to do is, at least what's helpful for me is first to focus the most on the footwork. So I'm not worried about which wall I'm changing, because uh, typically when I'm out there on the social dance floor, the wall changes are easier in general to kind of just like wing it and follow along and watch people. Usually the hardest part is the footwork and usually that's kind of the first thing that you wanna learn. So I don't worry about when I'm spinning, I don't worry about where I'm wall changing or how much to travel, how much not to travel. I'm At first, I'm more or less just staring at the feet, trying to get that vocabulary down. From there, once I get the footwork, I'll kind of open, expand my view and start to see, okay, when do people change walls? When is there a turn involved? And I start to get more of a broader feel of what's going on in the dance. Then at that point, I just jump in and usually through my immersive experience being with everyone else, my brain kind of picks up the rest of it. All right, number three, you wanna create an audible guide. So think of someone playing piano, they have a metronome, they have that clicking sound that's really like, hey. So in a lot of things, you have this direct feedback on when you're doing things right or not, or when you're learning. Like for example, if you're doing basketball, you either make the ball in the hoop or you don't, like it's pretty easy. Tap dancing in some ways can be not easy, but maybe more clear in the learning process because you can hear what the rhythm is. You can kind of hear when you're in rhythm or not in rhythm, same thing with singing. So oftentimes I find that with dancing, we're so much in our head that there's not enough clarity to guide us when learning. So when I wanna be really fast in learning something and I wanna integrate it really fast, I'm gonna create an audible guide and this is really awkward, but I will say it out loud. So you might see me and obviously if I'm on the social dance floor, I'm probably gonna like, you'll see me like whispering it to myself. And at this point I can do most of it in my head, but definitely I'm like, okay, rock, step, triple step, rock, step, freeze. And I just repeat that. And so oftentimes before I physically move my body to a routine, I've gotten the routine down either to counts, to uh, the vocabulary steps. You know, there's many different ways that you can create an audible guide, but I usually get a pretty good routine or song down with my vocals before my body does it. Because then when I go out there, I can kind of sing that mantra either out loud or in my head and my, it'll kind of encourage my body to keep up, to get it. So I really find this to be one of the most powerful tools. I use this all the time when I'm teaching and I use this as a student, not only in dance, but literally everything I wanna learn ever. So audible guides, practice it. I promise it'll feel a little awkward at first, but then it'll be so powerful for your learning experience. This brings me to the fourth tip, which is going to be repetition. I am so huge on repetition, building that muscle memory as fast as you possibly can. I mean, they often say, right, if you want to be a good writer, it's not about dwelling over one perfect essay. It's about writing every single day. You just have to take action a lot and consistently. So, when I'm trying to learn something, if I'm in the classroom, I'm trying to learn a line dance, I'm going to be squeezing in as many repetitions as I possibly can on the thing that I'm specifically trying to work on. And I just 
I fit in so many more repetitions. So see how much you can do, how fast you can work. Um, so if you're at the club and you're working on a line dance, I give myself the whole song to learn the dance. So I tried this whole process that I just gave you in the video. I tried to do this within the, what, three minutes that the line dance is. And typically, unless it's like crazy all-star routine with all these wall changes that my brain explodes, for the most part, most routines, I can get within that single song. And that just takes repetition, efficiently moving through my process and getting out on the dance floor and having fun. So if you enjoyed some of those tips, I would love for you to go try them out and let me know how it went. Comment below after you've tried it out on a night of dancing of your own. And if you would like to get more content like this, please subscribe and like and comment below because that really just tells me what kind of content to make for you all. Also, I have a line dancing course that's all about diving deeper into how to have uh, creative dances, how to look and feel the way that you wanna dance out on the line dancing floor. And if you want more information about that, just click the link below. All right, so take care.